Hey, how's it going? In this video, we are going to respond and react to this video from Pilot Yellow. His name is Misha. I've met him a couple times. Uh, you know, he was one of the, the first people that like talked about helicopters on YouTube, and he was one of the people that made me want to get into helicopters. So Misha is a really cool guy, and it looks like he's going to be talking about the Cabri G2. So now I have flown that helicopter quite a bit. So it'll be kind of interesting to see what he says. We will respond to this video and. And uh, I'll give my comments about it, but without further ado, we will get into it. Welcome back, you guys. Another video. Today we're talking about why does the Fenestron tail rotor suck? And so we'll see if he actually believes that. Now us YouTubers, we have to make titles that are kind of interesting. So let's see if that is actually true, because I've got very strong thoughts about this. Well, I don't actually think it sucks, but I do want to explain what I mean by that. There's a reason behind it, and Fenestrons as a whole, they actually get a really bad reputation, and sometimes it's, it's warranted, sometimes it's not. So I wanna to explain to you how does the Fenestron tail rotor work, how does it differ from a conventional tail rotor, and, uh, and why the issue uh, exists, and if we can fix it. So the reputation, the bad reputation that the Fenestron has is that people say it doesn't have enough authority, which means... Um, Okay, so we quickly have to just talk about Fenestron. I know I spelled that wrong, but Google will fix it. So Fenestron tail rotor is this shrouded, enclosed, protected tail rotor. You can see that it is protected versus like R22 tail rotor, Robinson R22. What you'll see here is two large exposed blades um, pretty big. You can walk into these tail rotors, so they're kind of known for being dangerous. You can see that's kind of big there. And then Fenestron is kind of more of a shrouded, protected tail rotor. So for anyone that doesn't know, that's the context. What they're really trying to say is that there's uh, helicopters that have a Fenestron tail rotor, and they have had instances, lots of them, where the helicopter went into a spin, it's called LTE, loss of tail rotor effectiveness, and they weren't able to stop that spin, and then they ended up in a crash. Now, well, let's, let's talk about why would that happen. There's a few things that we really need to understand fundamentally about Fenestrons um, as to why that would happen. So, first thing that we need to understand is with a Fenestron tail rotor, something like this, okay, not a conventional two-bladed or whatever tail rotor, Rotor, it's a non-linearized input. So that means when you input your pedal input, so now we, we're having torque applying to the helicopter in a European uh, aircraft, it's going to start yawing to the left, so you're going to have to start applying a uh, right pedal. When you apply that pedal, it's non-linear. So when you uh, are putting pedal, 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 you're not getting the same amount of authority out of that Fenestron tail rotor as you would with a conventional tail rotor. So if you were in, let's say, I don't know, a Robinson or a Bell or something like that, a Jet Ranger or whatever, you put in a, a pedal input and it's linearized, meaning the exact same pedal input that you're putting in, you're getting the same amount of authority out of that tail rotor. That's really important to understand that differentiation. So when we're flying with a Fenestron, typically you apply a lot of extra pedal input to get the same amount of authority. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna come through translation typically uh, from forward flight to the hover. You're gonna demand a lot of to uh, pedal input because there's a lot of torque. And so you start feeding the, uh, that pedal input in and it, it takes a while for you to actually get the reaction that you're looking for. So now you're feeding, 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 putting in quite a bit of pedal and then all of a sudden, okay, now there's the authority that I'm looking for. Okay, so that is massive right there. That is like the whole point of when people say Fenestron tail rotors, these shrouded, seven-bladed, protected tail rotors, they don't have enough authority. They, I don't feel like I've got enough yaw control. You have plenty of yaw control. You have plenty of tail rotor authority. However, it is not like the same amount that you may be used to in a typical tail rotor amount or a typical like style of tail rotor, you need a lot of pedal input in a Cabri G2. So he's talking about a Cabri here. You need a lot of pedal input. So versus like a Robinson, you, you need pedal input, but it's not that significant. In the Cabri, you're using a ton of right pedals. So it feels like you don't have the same tail rotor authority. So it feels like you're using more. However, the foot position and the amount that you have to apply is more significant. And because of this delay, this uh, delay in authority, people um, typically say, oh, okay, well, it's not as authoritative of tail rotor. The other thing that happens, a lot of the time, um, when you have a Fenestron, 
I, I shouldn't say a lot of time. There's instances with certain helicopters where there's not enough power in that aircraft. It's a heavy aircraft. It just doesn't have the power that it's required. Maybe you're loaded up to gross weight, you're high altitude, whatever the situation. And so when you're dealing with a situation like that, now when you get that spin happening, so now you're getting that torque effect, you're getting into LTE or loss of tail rotor effectiveness, and, and that spin is happening, you're applying that right pedal in this instance, or if you're spinning to the right, you're applying left pedal, and you're going to hit max stop, so you're going to hit full right pedal, and the, the helicopter is going to continue rotating. And you're pulling power, but there's not enough power in the engine to actually keep the blades spinning at their full speed, okay? Now, I'm, that's called over-pitching, by the way, so the rotor system is going to start slowing down. Now, when the rotor system slows down, the tail rotor slows down as, as well. They're direct linkages, okay? Now, I'm going to pause here for a second and explain something different. The tail rotor, if you're in a conventional tail rotor, it spins six times faster than your main rotor system. Now, in a finished run like this, it spins ten times faster. This is really critical to understand because when the Fenestron is spinning at full speed, it actually has the same amount of authority, approximately, as a conventional tail rotor. At full speed, similar uh, uh, authority. That's really important. However, when you slow down that tail rotor, because it's spinning 10 times faster than that main rotor, you lose the authority on that tail rotor much quicker. Also super critical right there. That is really interesting. So when I practice hover auto, so you are in a hover and you chop the throttle off and you fall, it's like three feet. It's just a emergency maneuver we practice. In a Robinson helicopter, you know, you lose tail rotor authority, but it's pretty proportional and you maintain some of it as you're descending. However, in the Cabri G2, which he's talking about here, you do not maintain that tail rotor authority. So another thing he was saying, and I've been flying the Cabri now, is in a Robinson helicopter, I never used full deflection. I never used full pedal input, but in the Cabri, I have. So I, I still believe and this is just like the general point. I have plenty of tail rotor authority. I've never really been concerned about it. But there's been times where I've been full right pedal and just to get to get it to do what I need it to do. But I've never, re it's really not been a problem. So if you've over pitched the helicopter, the rotor system is slowing down, main rotor and tail rotor, now you're running into an issue because the tail rotor on the Fenestron is losing the efficiency much, much quicker than a conventional tail rotor would. That's really critical because now you're getting into the spin, you're running out of pedal, the, the engine's drooping, the rotor's drooping, and now you're losing that authority on the tail rotor, it starts spinning around, you end up in an accident. So people give it this bad reputation, they say, hmm, this is not a good thing, the tail rotor, the Fenestron tail rotor is not as good. That is fundamentally not the case. So if a pilot is quick enough to get that pedal input in, the authority is there. If they have enough power behind the helicopter to keep the rotor spinning at full speed, that authority is there. Those things are, are really critical to understand. Yep. Okay, so to sum up this final point, if you're a pilot that has been properly trained, how do you how to fly with a Fenestron, and you understand the limitations with it, you're gonna have absolutely no problem. So that's uh, that's the important thing. To and like uh, Misha said, it's really not a problem. Like I, I really genuinely have not experienced a problem. You know, I, I came from the Robinson R22 and the Robinson R44, which is like this helicopter, the, the two blade, you can see one of the blades right here. And then I made the switch over to um, the Cabri, the Cabri G2. I haven't had any problems. Like it really was like a pretty similar transition. The biggest problem was, uh, actually the rotor system spin different ways so the pedals actually change so that was a bigger problem but tail rotor authority you know you do kind of feel it out and every new helicopter you fly you kind of feel out its characteristics but it has not been a problem to understand fenestrons are inherently um totally fine there there's a lot of safety features that actually uh, benefit you with, benefit you with a fenestron it's actually quieter which is quite nice of course it's much harder to walk into um, unlike this one right here which could cut your head off right there which is not fun at all uh, much harder to uh, to hit your tail rotor on something if it's enclosed so that's really really good and important something that i found fascinating to learn actually um when jason introduced this project about the hill hx50 to us um, we were talking about the Fenestron tail rotor. His is not a Fenestron, by the way. Um, we, I have to be very careful about that. His is called a linearized ducted fan. And there's actually a bit of a design change that is very, very clever. So um, the engineering team, they look...
What is happening? Hey. Tail rotor. Hey. And so the reason that's so important <sighs> is because the trend. Hey, you know. This is uh this is the life of a YouTuber, you know. Things happen there. Um, he probably had to cut something out that wasn't meant to be said. That happens, you know. I've I've made mistakes as a YouTuber, uh, where things get kind of weird. You can see he's talking all normal, and then uh, and then the music happens. That's kind of interesting. That's so crazy. Uh, that aren't familiar with uh, that type of tail rotor are going to be able to transition much, much simpler. Okay, so we will leave that video right there. Kind of just an interesting concept. I just want to, my final thoughts are, finish on tail rotors, they're great. They're a lot quieter. They're a lot safer. You cannot walk into them. I have not had experienced any problems. They do have some limitations. You got to, you use more pedal and you got to be quicker with that pedal, but it's really not a problem. And I guess that wraps up my thoughts. So kind of like an interesting conversation. Um, thank you, Misha, for this video. If you have any questions about finish on tail rotors, leave them down in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer them. If you like these videos and you want to support me check out my patreon down below if you want to give me a couple dollars per month subscribe for all kinds of helicopter content and i will see you guys on the next